This is chapter four, day two of 11 days. Um, we're just going over a lot of vocabulary. It's going to be a lot of writing. So, of course, you're going to have to um, do a good job of pausing the video and um, writing things down. So um, we're going to go over a lot of different words and stuff, and I may have some extra things for you. So uh, let's first of all, go over some basic things. A population, as you can see right here, is every person or thing of interest to investigate. Now, a population can be as small as the population of my fifth period class, for example, 40 people. It can be as large as the population of the U.S. It's also called the parameter of interest. They call it the value of interest here, but they often call it the parameter of interest. You may want to write that phrase down right here, parameter of interest. And that means what is the population you're studying? That's a real common concept. Okay, a sample is a subset of the population, as you can see right here, and it's called a statistic. Okay, so this class is AP statistics, meaning that we are studying statistics to make a judgment about parameters or populations. You really can't study populations too often. You could easily study my fifth period, you know, all 40 kids or whatever, that'd be easy. But when you get into larger things like the population of the school, then you're, you know, probably, that's probably a lot of work. So you may be studying a subset of it. And hopefully it's what's called a representative sample that's down here. If your subset is a representative sample of the population, then you can study the subset and draw conclusions about the whole thing. That's the entire concept of statistics, really. Um, sampling frame is all the possible outcomes. Okay, that's pretty easy. And the goal is to get a representative sample. And there are different techniques, and we're gonna talk about that soon, different techniques to get a representative sample. And it does involve human judgment and you can often have more than one correct way to do it but it is a judgment call how do you get a uh, subset okay all right so let's look at this now that's uh i'm just going to have you identify the population parameter of interest the sampling frame and the sample all right so the first one i'm going to read it this is real slow i know kickstart cola wants to know how the average male feels about diet drinks from their database, they sent out 2,000 random, to sent out surveys, 2,000 random men in the US and asked them approximately how many cans of diets, drinks they consume annually. It's a crazy question, but the population is, you know, young males, I guess, 18 to 49. The parameter is the number of diet drinks males consume annually. Okay, the sampling frame is all the ones in the database. I don't know where their database is, but they have some sort of database. That database may not include homeless men. It may not include people that just go into the radar, you know, from not turning in their taxes or whatever. So, and the sample is the 2000 men surveyed. Okay, 1B. Gun control has always been a hot button issue for politicians to determine if she should address the issue. Senator Fiora from Florida surveyed 500 of her constituents, constituents of the voters, to determine what percentage her state feels that some legislative change needs to be made. So the population is all Floridians. How many people are in Florida? I'm guessing 10 million. I'm not quite sure, something like that. The parameter is the percentage of Floridians who feel there needs to be changes in gun control. That's the parameter of interest. The sampling frame is all Floridians of voting age, and the sample is the 500 Floridian survey, okay? So if she does a good job, the 500 people will be, uh, we'll give her an idea. Now, if she gets a non-representative sample, like maybe only young people answer the survey, or maybe it's all elderly people, then it wouldn't tell her what she needs to know, okay? Then 1C, poodles a breed of dogs 
are thought to be more intelligent than other breeds of dogs. Yeah, I think they are. A veterinarian wants to study their cranium anatomy, head circumference, as compared to other breeds, okay? Uh, he selects 80 dogs from five local pounds for his study. <clears throat> all right. Population is all the poodles. The parameter of interest is the poodle head circumference. That's kind of weird, okay? Sampling frame is all the poodles in the local pound, and the sample was the 20 that he got, okay? All right, now, this is going to be a long write for you. So, again, you're going to want to pause this. These are the techniques to get a representative sample. All right. So, and I'm going to have you write maybe some additional things here. So, listen to my voice on this. All right. An SRS. An SRS is a simple random sample. Okay. SRS, I'm going to write that and you should write it too, is a simple, simple random sample it's very famous srs is as famous as saying pe for physical education okay it's just super normal okay so simple random sample i know stratified random sample is also srs but we don't we don't call it that we call it a stratified sample but a simple random sample okay let me give you a real sense of when a simple random sample is useful. It's useful when all subjects are basically equal, homogenous. An example I have is lab rats. <clears throat> people are usually different, so it's kind of difficult to do a simple random sample with people unless you recruit in a study people that are the same. I've seen studies where they say, okay, we're going to do a study on does this particular bodybuilding muscle, you know, uh, supplement work. So they recruit like 30 men that are all the same age, weight, and height. So they get them all the same to begin with. You could do it that way. You could recruit people that are all the same. But if you think about it, the reason why you want them all the same is because when you do a study, if you were, if all your subjects are the same, and then you sample from that, from that amount, from that group, then for sure your subset will be that, will be equal to that. So if you have a bunch of rats, you want to study rats, rats are often the same size. I'm not a rat expert, but I think they're kind of the same size. So if you study rats, if you just get, if you just do a simple random sample and get 10 rats, they're probably going to represent all rats, okay, because they're so similar. All right. A stratified sample is the goal is it's useful when a variable is clearly an important factor that's got to be addressed the obvious one is maybe maybe gender okay so you're doing a study on um something in a school and you want to know people's opinions well you probably should get 50 boys and 50 girls because maybe they're inherently different you also have obvious stratas at a school with age. You have freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Those are stratas. By the way, what is a strata? Write this down. A strata is a group. Okay, so a strata is a group. So write that down. That's all it is, a strata is a group. So if you're doing a study on how, um, the La Quinta kids like the cafeteria, for example, then you may want to do something that involves freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Maybe their tastes are different. I'm not quite sure. Okay. So, and maybe you get 10 of each. Uh, if you want to do a study on how people like an assembly, it'd be the same thing. You probably should ask as many freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors because that probably makes the most sense. Okay. A systematic sample is um, when you use a system, and my example is every 10th unit, which makes sense. Um, this is often done when you have assembly line type situation. Okay, very common. It could also be used for this. Let's say you're doing a study on um, something with kids and they're kind of lining up to come in the gym. 
you could go every 10th person and ask them a question. The problem with that is you may get all seniors or all males or all females, you might, but it's great for assembly line stuff. So if you're, if you're doing assembly line work and, you, and you're making uh, a car or something, if you inspect every 10th car, you're probably doing okay. It, it probably is gonna work, okay? All right, uh, next one is a cluster sample, okay? A cluster sample, there's lots of different clusters you could use. My examples are nails, candies, grapes, whatever, but it's often used because you wanna check, randomly check a box of nails. If you ever go into a warehouse of nails, there's so many boxes that you couldn't really check the individual nails. But what you can do is randomly select a box of nails and then inspect it. So randomly select a cluster, maybe number the clusters one to a hundred, there's a hundred clusters or boxes and then do that. Another one that's kind of interesting is with cluster. I've seen this done, I wanna write this down with neighborhoods. Neighbor, neighborhoods. Okay, here's my thought on this. Let's say you're a politician and you want to kind of go door to door, get an idea of uh, what people think. Well, you could do a systematic uh, sample and walk to every 10th door and talk to somebody about what you want as a politician. You could. The problem with that is it's a lot of walking. So what you might do is divide your city up into 15 clusters and then randomly select two of the clusters and go to every door within that cluster and hope that represents your city. But there's another way to do a cluster sample. In a cluster sample, listen to this now, in a cluster sample, it's important, you randomly select the cluster and examine every item in the cluster for your sample, okay? I hope that makes sense. You may wanna write that down as well. I'll say it again. In a cluster sample, you randomly select a cluster and then examine every item in that cluster. Okay, a convenient sample has a star by it because it's not considered very good, but it is quick and low cost. This is your mall surveys, eyeballing things. This is a pretty simple idea, okay? This convenient sample, okay? Um, so, um, convenience sampling is considered kind of, it can be inaccurate, but it's also a cheap way to do things. All right. And then multi-stage is of course, combining several of these methods, you know, so, and that's useful for when you have a really large complex thing. An example of that, of that might be, we're going to do a cluster sample. So we're going to get two neighborhoods and then within that cluster, I'm gonna do a systematic sample and go to every 10th house within that cluster. There's another way you can do it. That's multi-stage, not common, okay? So let me, let me talk about the, the big ones. The big ones are one, two, three, four, five, and five. Those are the big ones, okay? All right, awesome. A volunteer sample, by the way, is considered a convenient sample. All right, now let's identify the sampling methods used. Okay. Conscientious Consumers is a consumer advocacy group that wants to determine the annual maintenance costs of SUVs versus sedans. Sedan. SUV is a large car, sedan is a smaller four door car. They randomly select 80 auto repair shops across the country and tabulate all costs associated with SUVs and with sedans for those shops within the past, in the past 12 months. All right, what is that? This is a good one. I know you see the answer. This is a good one. This is a cluster sample. This is awesome. This is really kind of hard to detect, okay? So they randomly select the, the, you know how many auto repair shops there are across the country? Oh my gosh, there's you know, hundreds of thousands, but they randomly select 80 of them okay randomly select 80 of them so that is a cluster sample okay because they're gonna they're literally gonna tabulate everything within that cluster remember a cluster you randomly select a cluster but examine everything within the cluster and that's what they're doing there that's a cool one okay 2b 
are boys better at math than science and girls? Of course, the answer is no, but this is an old prompt from you know many years ago. To answer this question, an educational researcher randomly selected 100 boys and 100 girls from the college board registry and examined their SAT math and their SAT uh, subject scores and their math scores. Okay, fine. All right, so they examine 100 boys and 100 girls. Those are two groups. Two groups means they're both stratas, two stratas. So that's a stratified samples. The stratas are groups of boys and girls. No problem. To see how safety filled school, the school safety commission randomly selected 30 LQ students and asked them to complete a school safety questionnaire. The results were then disseminated to the administration, then the faculty and the fobs and the school board. All right. So they just selected 30 kids, the other parts, nothing. They randomly selected 30. They didn't categorize them, boys, girls, so freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors. They didn't do anything like that. They just treated it as one group. So that's a simple random sample. All right, and then 2D, to ensure that all knives are made to specification, the quality control manager at Better Blades Company carefully inspects a knife produced each hour. Each hour is a system, system. So that's a systematic sample. And the algorithm is each hour, all right? So there's your big four that I went over, okay? And of course, convenience is the fifth one. All right, Seas Candies makes chocolates of different shapes and flavors. This is kind of cool. Their boxes contain um, six random pieces of candy to configure the average number of calories in one of their pieces of candy, construct a sampling design incorporating the specific sampling method all right awesome so systematic if you did a systematic maybe it could be every third one so if i did every third it would be you know the third one the sixth one the ninth one the twelfth one the you know the, the i'll just do the whole thing 15th one the 18th one 21 24 it'd be those okay that would be a systematic sample. Now I could do a systematic sample, but start on the first one. So then it'd be the first, the fourth, the seventh, et cetera. You could do it that way too. Okay. Now a simple random sample. Okay. A simple random sample would be you got pieces one through 36. Okay. And a simple random sample, you can see that. And in this case, you would just more or less get a random number generator. And let's just you would just pick four of them. Let me do that for you real quick. Let me show you how you could do that on your calculator. You can also do it <clears throat> on your random digit table as well, okay? So let me clear this real quick. Okay, so let's bring up the calculator. Be a little delay here. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, math and go over to probability and go down to random integer. Okay, random integer. And it was 1 to 36. So I'm going to go 1 to 36. And let's say I want to pick four of these. Okay. Okay. So those are the four that I got, 30, 19, 4, and 29. So that would be, what did I say? 30, 19, 4, I think I said that, and 29. Okay. Happened to get two in one box, but that can happen by accident. That's one of the, that's one of the flaws of, an SRS is that you might get, you know, you might not separate things. So that's a simple random sample. Now you can also use a, a random number gener, I mean, a, uh, your random digit table, which I will get out in just a second. Okay. The other way to uh, <clears throat> handle an SRS is, you know, you could give them all a number. So we're going to go 01, as you can see. This is 01, I'll circle it, to 36. So my unusable numbers are 37 to, uh, 
to 99 and 00, zero okay so what you do on this if you haven't learned this yet is you got to get a random digit table there is one in the uh let me find it here where are we at here yeah there is one in the book this is the back of the book one they call it table b or something like that let me make it a little oops let me make it a little bit bigger Table B. All right. So we'll just start on line 101. That's a common spot to start. I'm having trouble keeping it on the screen. Okay, there we go. I'll just leave it right there. Okay, so the first number is 19. So I'm going to select 19 first. No repeats. The next one is 22. You can see it right there. Let me clear that again. Try it. 19, then 22. So 19, then 22. The break in the page here has nothing to do with anything. It's just for readability. The next one is number 39. That's unusable because we it was 01 to 36. Then 50 is next. That's unusable. Then 34 is next. That's 34. Then 05 is next. Got it. 05. And then next is 75, which is unusable. 62 is unusable. 87 is unusable. And 13 is the last one. So that's how you would do it. Now, why did I choose line one? Just for convenience. Um, sometimes in class, I'll have the kids, you have your seat number, and I'll have you all do a different line. So if you're at seat 34, I have you go to line 134, for example. Okay. So I'm going to leave that there. And so if you did a simple random sample with the random digit table using line one, then I would have got number 19. I would have got number 22, which is right here. I would have got number 34 right there. I would have got 05 right there. And I would have got 13, which is right there. OK. Um, and that's it. That's pretty cool. Okay, a stratified sample. Stratified. For a stratified sample, you need to pre-sort the data. So this is something that humans do, okay? So we're going to pre-sort the data based on something that you think is important, okay? So if I, if I pre-sorted them by shape, that would be the moon, the square, the circle, the heart, the flag, and then the star, triangle, diamond, and pentagon. You could do it that way, right? This is something that the pre-sorting is what you choose. Then you do a simple random sample within each strata, okay? So of the moon ones, which are, I'll check the moon ones. Moon is 01. It's number 20. I'm checking them. It's number 30, I'm checking it. And it's number 35, I'm checking that. What I would do is then I would just choose one of those numbers. Now, how would I do that? Maybe I put those four numbers on a piece of paper and put them in a hat and take one out. Does that make sense to you? Then I take, I pick one of these randomly and one of these randomly, et cetera. So then in the end, my representative sample is one of each shape. So I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's, that's probably the most logical way to do a stratified one. There's another strata, a strata you can do, another one you can do, a set of shape. You could do the strata of the boxes, okay? So this is strata one, this is strata two, this is strata three. This is strata four. This is strata five. And this is strata six. If you did stratas by boxes, the risk is you may get similar shapes. Because what I would do is I would pick one from this box. So I would do random integer from one to six. Let me go ahead and do that on the calculator here. Okay, I'll bring that. Let me show you how that would work. Okay. So I would go. Uh, math, probability, random, integer, okay, 
and I'd say one to six, and I just want one of them, okay? So I would pick number five would be my first one, item five, okay? So remember item five, and then I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna go math, probability, random integer, and I'm gonna, the next one was seven through 12, I believe, seven through 12, and I'm gonna pick one of them, okay? Number nine. So I got number five and number nine. I would keep doing that along the way. So in that system, get a different color here, I would do number five right here and number nine. And I would just keep going and get one per box. Now remember, if you stratify by boxes, each one's a strata, you may get repeat shapes. If you strata by the shape to begin with, you will get one of each shape. It depends on what you think is most important. That's the human element. Okay, now the cluster sample is similar to the box one again. So I'm gonna do this again. Now this, you'll see the difference between a strata and a cluster. This is, happens all the time. So listen closely. Okay, so the cluster sample, I'm gonna make six clusters. The, cl the best clusters are the boxes. They're a natural cluster. Three, four, five, six. Now, the cluster says I'm gonna randomly pick the entire box as my representative sample, the entire box. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my calculator and there are six boxes. I'm gonna go math, probability, random integer, one through six. I'm just gonna get one of them. And I'm getting the whole box. So I'm taking box number six. So box number six, I examine the whole thing. All six of these are my representative sample for the whole group. So the difference is a stratified sample randomly selects an item or two out of each group. The cluster says randomize the groups and randomly select the whole group for your sample. That's the difference. OK, now, if I did this one through six thing on the piece of paper, which I'll show you on this, OK, I would say, all right, I'm going to I'm going to say I need to get one through six. And seven, eight, nine and zero are unusable. So one through six. And let's just say I'm told to start in line 110. I just need the first number. And the first number, as you can see, is a three. So I would pick box three based on that random selection. Okay, box three, let's if I go back to the notes, that would be this particular box right here, box three. And that would be my entire thing. Once again, in a cluster sample, you randomly select the whole box and, and count or categorize each item. In a stratified sample, you put them into groups but sample out of each group. That's the difference. Those are your big four. I hope I explained that pretty thoroughly. So to put it to the test, we're gonna to go to the Aztec Arena. We built a new gym, we're calling it the Aztec Empire Arena. Okay, the owner of the arena wants to get a random sample of approximately 1,000 fans to answer some demographic questions about gender, age, income, et cetera. We're gonna study the different ways to sample, okay? And as you can see, the tickets to the 100 level, the 100 levels right here, the courtside seats are $100 each, and each section can fit uh, 200 people. The 200 tickets in the 200 level are 200 each, those are like the luxury boxes, and each section can seat 20 people. Tickets in the 300 level are $20 each, and each section can seat 500 people. Okay, how many people are in the arena if it is sold out? All right, so I did the math here. So take your time on this. <clears throat> there are um, 14 to, um, people 
excuse me, there are 14 100 level sections. And that's 200 people each. There are um, 18 200 level ones. If you count them all out, okay, they go 20 uh, right here, 201 to 218 going around, right? So there's 20 of those, and there's 55. Um, let's see here. There are 22 sections at 55 there, okay? <clears throat> so that ends up being um, about 14,160 fans. All right, fine. Now, question one. Explain how you would obtain a simple random sample of fans. Okay, all you would do is maybe, I got an idea, take all the ticket stubs from all 14,160 fans, all 14,000 of them, put them in a vat, I think it's called a vat where you spin it, and select a thousand tickets because they, they, the owner wants you to uh, sample about a thousand fans to answer some demographic questions like, what do you want to eat? That kind of stuff so they can make more money off you. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> number um, three, explain how you could obtain a stratified random sample of fans. Stratified random sample, okay, from a strata. Okay, stratified, to me, there are three obvious stratas, the three levels, the 100 level, the 200 level, and the 300 level. Those are the obvious stratas, okay? So what you might do, and you, gotta, you may want to weight this by percentage. But I think, I think about 70% are in the upper level. So maybe you get 700 of those. Maybe you get 200 of the 100 level and 100 of these, something like that. Just get a percentage of them, okay? It's the same thing. You put them into groups, three different vats. So get their tickets and spin them and then get some from each group. You probably would not want 333 from each section. Probably not because it's, there's more people in the uh, 300 level ones, okay? Number um, four, how could you obtain a cluster level of fans? All right, you could randomly select this whole cluster 301 and randomly select this cluster and randomly select this cluster and go to everyone in that section and give them Chromebooks and have them fill out demographic questions. That might be easier than going to a bunch of different people in every section. Okay, so that's a cluster. All right, systematic. Maybe you ask every 14th person. I think every 14th person would give you about a thousand, I think, something like that, right? Because it's 14,000. Every 14th person, as they walk in, have them fill out some demographic information. All right, and then devise your own system. There's lots of them. I did like a strata by proportion, select two luxury areas, two luxury, that's like 18 and, you know, 18 and 218 and 211, two, uh, two I don't know. 15 courtside, um, 61 people from the deck, if you want to get 100 people, I don't know, something like that. So there's an idea, there, there, there's lots of different ideas there. This is really a fun activity to do all together. It's fun. This is a great discussion activity. On video, it's not as good, but it's a great discussion activity. All right. I hope that helps. Thank you so much.